and welcome back to today's video. And um, if you are new here, my name is Eva Mtali. It's a pleasure to um, have you on the channel. You know how we roll here, guys. When you come onto the channel, please say hello in the comment section below. Um, give the video a like and um, do let me know where you are watching me from. The likes are free and um, it helps with the algorithm and also do share this video. So this is a follow-up to the previous live that I did on um, working in Europe without a work permit. And we're looking at um, a program that allows you to work in the country of Lithuania without a work permit. And um, this is a follow-up to that video. So a lot of you have been asking me that, hey, Eva, okay, you have shared with us this opportunity to work in Lithuania without a work permit if my um, profession falls in the shortage occupation list, but how do you go about it? So generally, if you are a third country national, that's what I call them, if you're not a member of the EU or the EFTA countries, you generally need a visa to visit Lithuania. So Lithuania being a Schengen country, you usually need either a type c schengen visa which is a short stay schengen visa and it is the most common type of visa that you can use to visit Lithuania. and um, you can either get a single entry that is one um, entry or you can get a double entry which is two entries or you can get a multiple entry which basically allows you to enter and leave as many times as you want for a maximum of 90 days over an 80 over an, a 180 day period now since we are talking about working in Lithuania, um i would suggest that you apply for what they call the national visa which is the type d it is a long stay schengen visa and it is mandatory for any foreigner wishing to study to work or to live in a schengen country for longer than 90 days but up to one year. So if you are looking to go and work in any one of these shortage occupations in Lithuania, then I would advise that you apply for the Type D National Long Stay Schengen Visa. So the travel purpose which can justify applying for a Category D visa is tourism or private visit, professional activities, to study, to take part in a training program or complete an internship or for family reasons. So how do you go about it? So what you can do is there are two ways you can go about it. And guys, this is not professional advice. I'm just thinking in my head, um, combining the different possibilities. So you can visit uh, Lithuania on a Schengen visa and then try and see if you can apply for any of the jobs that fall under the shortage occupation list. If you get a job, then your job is one of those in the shortage occupation list and it is still within the quota for the year then you can apply for a temporary residence permit so the temporary residence permit will allow you to stay in Lithuania for more than one year usually it's for two years if your occupation is a shortage occupation list but if you're in a highly skilled uh, profession then you're gonna get a visa for I mean a temporary permit for three years Guys, I hope I am making sense. Please let me in the comment section below. So we have said you can apply for a Schengen visa. The only challenge is a Schengen visa maximum stay is three months over a 180 day period. So I suggest you apply for a national type D visa, which allows you to stay for, it's a one year visa, but you can stay for longer than 90 days. Once you are within Lithuania, apply for the jobs. Somebody is telling me to, <laughs> to spell Oh my goodness let me spell <laughs> somebody's telling me to spell Lithuania because I know it's one of those countries that most people do not know about so once you are within the country or even when you're still out you can apply for uh, these jobs on uh, the different websites online websites or if you have like indeed or um, there's a website called uh, work in work in Lith Lithuania <laughs> my goodness Lithuania let me just spell it here so that we are on the same page you can uh, once you find a job for example and it is in the shortage occupation list which I shared with you guys on the live yesterday remember you do not need a work permit all you have to do is apply for um, 
the temporary residence permit. And I've said if you intend to stay in Lithuania for, wait, let me just type it because I'm butchering the name. If you intend to stay in Lithuania for no longer than a year, you can obtain the national type D visa if your job is going to be for less than a year. But if you want a job which is more than a year, then you have to apply for... Um, no, actually, the name is right there. Whoever is asking me for the name, I, I didn't even realize that it was already the title. Leuthania. This is the name. Leuthania. That is the name. That's the name, yeah, for those who are asking. So if you're staying in Lithuania for no longer than a year, you can obtain a national visa. If you intend to stay longer, you should opt for a temporary resident permit, which usually is issued for two years if your profession is the shortage occupation list. And for highly qualified workers, it's for three years. And you can usually renew it later. So you may receive a national visa for the duration of consideration for your application for a temporary residence permit. So let's say, for example, you are on a national um, type D visa, and then while you are still in Lithuania, you get a job under the shortage occupation list. Question is, can you start working before you get your residence permit? Yes, you can work. Can you move in with your family? No, you cannot. So once, maybe you're already in Lithuania, or if you're still outside of Lithuania, and you get a job, then you can use that job offer to apply for your Type D visa. And then once you get into Lithuania, then you can apply for the temporary residence permit. And to apply for the temporary residence permit, let me show you the kind of things you're gonna need. So number one, you're gonna need uh, to fill in uh, a form on the Lithuanian Migration Information System. It's called MIGRIS. And I'm going to show you that portal in a bit. Number two, you're going to need your valid travel document, which is your passport. And then you're going to need what we call the number of mediation letter. So this mediation letter is submitted by your employer via the Lithuanian Migration Information System, that is MIGRIS. And once they have submitted that um, letter, mediation letter on the portal, they'll be given a number. So they give you that number. You're going to need that number. And I'm going to show you in a bit on my computer here. So the mediation letter basically indicates whether you as a foreign foreigner has a multiple employer, a multi-employer contract, which means you have a contact with more than one employer. It also confirms that you as a foreigner, uh, your qualifications are relevant to the work being performed. So for example, if you are moving in as a plumber, then it means that you have the qualifications to work as a plumber. And then um, it also confirms that you, as a foreigner, you have at least one year's work experience in the last three years relevant to the work that you're going to be doing. So if you're going to be working as a plumber in Lithuania, then you need to have at least one year of work experience in the previous three years. And then the next document you're going to need, if this facilitation letter indicates that your monthly wage is less than one MMV, minimum wage, then you need a document that affirms that you have sufficient funds and regular income. So this is going like to be your bank statement. And then you're going to need um, to have a document. I mean, you're going to confirm on the MIGRIS system that you or that your place of residence is an accommodation within a living area of at least seven square meters, yeah? So wherever you're gonna be living, each adult person in that place must have at least seven square meters of living space. So that is a requirement for you, okay? Thank you, Chianiso, for the, um, uh, what is it, super chat, I love you so much. And then you're going to need, if you have lived in any country uh, for, if you are living in a country for the last two years and you have lived in that country for more than six consecutive months, then you're going to need a certificate of good conduct, which you're going to attach. I think here we call it, in Kenya it's called, 
yeah, certificate of good conduct you get from a DCI. So, guys, when you get onto the portal, the MIGRIS portal, you're going to get all that information. And also, um, on this link here, let me show you. So, what you need to do is once you have all those documents, you have already um, gotten the job offer and you're already in Luthania, for example, then you come to the MIGRIS portal. So I'm going to show you in a bit how. So this is the MIGRIS portal. Let me just link it up here. MIGRIS portal. Uh -huh. Let me just show you how it looks like. So this is how the portal looks like. Eh? So you'll come here migrasija.lt slash app slash also login so i already already submitted um i already tested the platform so let me just put in my email address so you have to enter you can just see here i'm just putting my email address and then logging in when, when it's you're logging in for the first time you'll have to register so for me i already registered so you can see here your email address please use the same login to sign in yeah gosh i can't even remember what i think they're gonna send me a code Okay, let me see. Mm, I think they send the code on Gmail. Just give me one minute. I didn't know that every time you log in, you have to. You have to. Oh, where is it? You have to get a new code. I thought it was automatic. Maybe that's why they don't ask for a password. And I'm sorry, guys, when I did the video yesterday, I assumed it was very straightforward, but I've been seeing a lot of queries, both on TikTok and here, and that's why I decided to just go through this process with you guys. So when you come here, they're going to ask you for, um, guys, please give the video a like, 33 of you online and only eight likes. So you can see I already received the code from my email, and I'm just going to paste it here and click on next. Yeah, you can see. Um okay so here new application okay so when you come here okay how am i gonna do this okay you just enter your name oh i don't want people to see my name <laughs> okay let me just change this until i have entered my name eva tali okay no, I don't have an application. No, I need to go to new app. Okay, so here's what I have done. I just came here and then I entered new application. Sorry. So when I entered new application, come on, why is it in small? When I entered new application, this is, you see, it's giving me a service choice. Yeah, so I'm going to, if what your employer is going to do, they're going to come here and say, I want to submit a mediation letter. Once they have submitted the mediation letter, They'll be given a number but for you you can say here um service choice application of behalf of natural persons um i want to submit a mission on citizenship issues no 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 that's not what you want uh -huh. come on where is that on behalf of natural persons yes i want to submit applications on behalf of natural persons your nationality i'll put kenya Kenya, you can see here, and then it's going to ask me what I want. Um, I'm going to select, I want to get a residence permit in Luthania. You can see here, if you come to, where is that? If you come to Luthania or live in Luthania for work, education, legal activities, family reunification, or otherwise you must obtain um, a residence permit in Luthania. So I click on next. Okay. And then once you click on next, it's going to ask you, I want to receive temporary residence permit. Um, I want to receive permanent residence. I want to change employer. So I will click on. If it's your first time, you're going to click on, I want to receive um, residence permit. You can see if you intend to stay in Luthania for longer than 90 days in one 80 days period, you must apply for temporary residence permit. Click here for more information. You can click on that link, but we're just going to click on next. Okay. And then now you can see the options, family, work, studies, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to click on work. And then 
If you intend to work in Lithuania for longer than a year, you must obtain a temporary residence permit, usually issued for two years, and then for highly qualified workers for three years, and can usually be renewed later. You may receive a national visa for the duration of consideration of your application for a temporary residence permit. Please click here for more information. Then we just click on next. Okay, I already have read those, so I know. And then you can see, guys, you can see it's very direct. I am a highly qualified employee. This one, I think I'm going to do the video tomorrow for the highly qualified employees. And then we have um, highly qualified, regulated profession, unregulated um, company as a manager. So we are looking for this one. Um, here, I intend to work under an employment contract. My profession is on the shortage list of occupations according to the activities of the company and I do not need the decision of the employment service that my labor meets the needs of the Lithuanian labor market. So you click on this, yeah? Because your profession is on the shortage occupation list. And then you can see the next step, the list of professions by economic activity that are lacking in the Republic of Lithuania is approved by the director of the employment services. Please click here for more. If your profession is on the list of professions that are lacking in the Republic of Lithuania, but your company is not classified in the construction, industry, or services sector, you need the employment officer's decision that your labor meets the needs of the Lithuanian labor market. In this case, you must fill in, I intend to work um, under an employment contract, my profession is not on the list of occupations that are lacking in the Republic of Lithuania according to the activities of the company and I need a decision. So here, you can see here, if you're applying first timer, you'll say apply for a permit. If you're applying for a renewal, you'll apply for renewal. So since we are first time, we'll apply for a permit. Click on that. As you can see, the way it is very direct. Oh, and then it will bring you here. The application to issue a temporary residence permit. I intend to work under an employment contract. My profession is on the shortage list of occupations according to the activities of the company and I do not need the decision of the employment services that my labor meets the needs of that. So you come here, application provided by. So if you are applying by yourself, you will click personally. If you are using a lawyer, click lawyer. If it is employer applying for you, they will click on themselves. So I'll say personally. And then there's a requested body. So it can be the Ministry of Migration of Lithuania itself, or we are using an external service provider. So right now, um, beginning this month, Lithuania is using VFS Global. So if you're gonna be using VFS Global, then you will enter external service provider. If it's directly to the um, Lithuanian uh, Ministry Migration Department, then you click on that. So let's click on that for argument's sake. So if you are applying to the migration department directly, then you can process your application. Um, general order means normal processing time where you're going to pay 120 euros. Agent order means fast track and you're going to pay 240 euros. So we can click agent order or general order. But if you're applying to the external service provider, you can only click on general order by default. So migration department, let's say general order. And then you're going to need to enter. In fact, you don't need to enter. Remember when we, we, we registered, we already entered our name. So you can see right here, um, my name appears automatically. Surname is there. And then you're going to need to enter your date of birth, your gender, country of birth, citizenship, uh, former citizenship, your marital status, residence in the country you're coming from. And then remember this question, is your place of residence currently declared in the Republic of Lithuania? So here you can say yes or no, but if you say yes, then you have to put the municipality. This one, most probably your employer will tell you. If you say no, they're going to ask you, you, in, you to indicate whether you wish to declare your place of residence through the migration department. If you say yes or no, they're still going to ask you. See, if I say yes, they'll still ask me. <laughs> If I say no, they still ask. You have to put the municipality here. And then contact details. These are your contact details. I've already put their mine as the foreigner because when I was registering, it comes here automatically. And then your travel documents uh, here basically is your passport, 
you're going to put the number, date of issue, date of expiry, your country, and then you're going to need the details of your employer. Is it a, a, a self, um, like is it an individual employing you? Go for natural person. If it's an organization, so if you click on natural person, there's nothing else to enter other than the name, surname of the employer, date of birth, blah, blah, blah. If you select legal entity, you have to enter the name of the employer, head office, phone number, email, and all that. If you enter natural person, you need their name, surname, date of birth, address, and email, phone number, blah, blah, blah. And then you have to indicate if you intend to do work that involves regular rides on international routes. Yes or no. So if you say yes, you do not need to provide the accommodation stuff. If you say no, you're going to have to provide. Then you indicate whether you will be sent to work for another member state of the European Union or the European Free Trade Association under a contract for the provision of services or works in that member state. So what this basically means, you could be employed by somebody who is in Lithuania, but you're probably going to be working in France and Belgium and another country, for example. And then here is the most important bit, name and code of the profession according to the Lithuanian classification of occupations. So here, your occupation will only feature if it is the shortage occupation list. So I'll use the plumber one because I, I know it's offered. So you can see if I enter plumber, it's giving me all the um, plumber jobs that apply. Yeah, then I have to click which one my job is, the profession I'm coming in as. If let's say I enter a cook, I remember there was a cook on the shortage occupation list. You can see the different types of cooks that are here. We have all these. Yeah, cook is part of the list I remember. Yeah, and then the other one I remember was what? Um, which other occupation can I remember? There was greenhouse somebody, greenhouse. So if you just type here, you see, qualified greenhouse worker. So if you just type the name of the occupation, it's going to come here and then you click on it. And then it, it will fill up there automatically. Then you expected earnings in euros. You have to enter here. This you'll get from your cover, your employment letter. And then data on means of subsistence in Lithuania. So amount of funds you have and source of means of subsistence. And then any additional information. Are you suffering from a disease that could endanger the health of a population? And then here you have to indicate your education. And this is has to be related to, to the, what can I say? It has to be related to the job you're going to do. So let's say if you're going to be a chef, for example, or a cook, you must have a certificate for that. You enter the institution, your education when you graduated, and the qualification. And then you can add more here. And then places of residence for the last 10 years. So this is important because if you have stayed in a place for more than six months consecutively, you'll need a police clearance certificate. Have been deprived of citizenship. Um, your current and most recent workplace and period of employment and position. This is important because for you to work under this shortage occupations list, you must have one year work experience in the last three years. Okay, if you've been convicted of a crime, all this, if you've been issued with a visa for the last five years, if you've been denied, have you applied for asylum, do you have relations with intelligence, security, military, all that information, yes or no, have you visited in foreign states before coming to the Republic of Lithuania, so you'll enter here, if you say yes, they're going to ask you which ones and when. <laughs> If you say no, they don't ask you for anything. And then the fee you've paid, so you can click here and say whether you are exempt, whether you'll be paying through e-government gateway, playing at paying at the place of service, paid by bank transfer, or if your fee was waived. Okay, then whether you wish the temporary residence permit to be withdrawn by the employer who undertakes to employ you. So you can say yes or no. And then now here, now you're going to attach your document. So here, you can see here, upon arrival at the migration department or to an external service provider, you will need to provide the original travel document and the original or duly certified copies of the other documents. So of course, you're going to need your travel document, that is your passport, then the mediation letter number. So this one, 
You can see right here, the employer's mediation letter is completed and submitted electronically via MIGRIS. The submitted mediation letter is given a number which is indicated here. That is what you put here. And then you're going to need a document certifying that you have sufficient funds to live in the Republic of Lithuania. This one here is also dependent on um, whether how much money you're getting paid and how much um, you're going to be given by your employer. And you can see one month means of subsidence in the Republic of Lithuania is one month minimum salary. That's what you're going to need. And then here, document on proper accommodation in the Republic of Lithuania. I already told you this must be um, seven, seven square meters for each elder. That must be the space. Yeah. The living space requirement does not apply if you are employed by the employer for the purpose of carrying out international journeys. So you're going to have to put all that. If you're being posted to other European unions or IFTA states, you have to enter that. If you do not have any criminal record, you have to attach. Um, and all that, guys, there's a whole lot of things you come and see here, and then you save that information and continue. So guys, um, as you've seen there, I can see some of you are asking me, so does it mean that um, you have to have a job? Yes, guys, this is a work. You're going to go there for work. So you have to have a job but like i've said you can for example if you have a schengen visa yeah which allows you to enter Lithuania, and you can stay in a schengen territory for 90 days in a 180 day period so that means you have to you can take advantage of that period when you're in the schengen country to look for these jobs that do not require a work permit but here is the catch Remember this, um, the Schengen visa, the type C, allows you to stay for only 90 days. So what you need to do is that as soon as you get your job or whatever it is, or if you're going there on a, a national visa type D, which is on the basis of employment, to obtain a work-based residence permit, you must submit your application to the Migration Department two to four months before your visa expires, yeah? So that will be your first agenda of business. But I would suggest you try and get your job while you are still outside of Lithuania. And um, if your employer doesn't know, you can let them know that there's this possibility of working without a work permit so that they can give you the documents that you need to apply for your Type D visa in your country. Or if you have a Schengen visa, you can visit Lithuania and then try and get those jobs and then apply for your um, temporary residence permit. But when you're a temporary residence permit, as long as you have submitted it, you're allowed to work as you wait for the visa to be processed. Guys, I hope this is now clear. I'm going to quickly read your comments and then I don't want this video to be too long. And guys, as you can see, I'm having a mouth so I ate seafood and I'm allergic to seafood. So... I'm now bearing the consequences. So let me quickly read your comments and then we'll call it a day. So Mwenya is saying hi. Hi, George. Hi, Tony. Hi, Mike. Hi, Wycliffe. Um, Regina, I'm not talking about Ukraine. I'm talking about Lithuania. Um, Onchoma sent you an email on this matter. I don't know what. Where did you send me when? Um, what was the question? Oh, yeah, well, they saying hello. Uh, <laughs> Regina, the name is funny, yes. I've pinned it here and it is in the title. Thank you, Retro. Chin Chioniso is saying I'm looking cozy and warm. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, Retro is saying you're the best. Thank you so much. Um, I didn't say Lukenia. I said Lithuania. It's Lithuania. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, Regina. Lithuania. Lithuania. Oh, my goodness. Can you do this for me, please? A day in do what for you? <laughs> Richard thought it was an African country. <laughs> it's a European country, guys. It's a little known European country. In fact, one of these, I need to visit Lithuania and do a vlog about it. Soon this year, I have to go to Lithuania. Um, James Gishu is saying hi. Um, someone is saying you're right. I live in Lithuania. And I say, oh, you are Samuel. I need to interview you. How are you there? Please DM me. We need to do a video. You let us know how you're there. And I'm planning to visit Lithuania one of these fine days. 
can you be my host and show me around? Um, Regina is saying, I'm sorry. Asha, hello dear, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Retro. Samuel, we go Kamla from Ghana. Yes, we need to go and visit Samuel. Please DM me. Um, oh, Chioni so is asking the list of the shortage occupation. Let me post it here right now. Hmm. Yeah, there was a video I did yesterday which informed this one. Let me post the link. So if you'll be watching this video after the fact, after the video, just click on replay. Um, just click on replay chat and then you will find the link there. So... Um, yes, yeah, so this one here. So if you click on the drop down list, you will find shortage occupation list and quarters. So that is the shortage occupation list and quarters. Mm. Um, and then, okay. So Chioni, so I hope you're able, so when you open, just click on those drop downs like um, services. Let me show you. Here is the website. So it's still the same website. Um, Migrasija.lt slash apps slash quarter. So you can see here the 2023 quarters. Um, so they have four industries, services, industry, construction, agriculture, forestry, and fishing. These are the quarters for 2023 for each of the industries. This is the, the uh, permits that have been applied for, and they're still remaining 31,000, guys. Only 4,000 have been applied for. So if you click like services, this is what you have. You click on, um, come on. You click on industry, just to click on this drop down. You see what is there for industry what occupations and then if you click on construction here this drop down you see the occupations that qualify you can see them there and then you click on agriculture that drop down and you can see the occupations that qualify um so i've posted that link as well in fact let me pin it here let me pin it. Okay, I've pinned it there. Mm. Retro. Yeah, Samuel, please let us know about Lithuania. Please DM me. Oh, is that what you use work work in Lithuania? But I know the, the thing with work in work in Lithuania, it only um looks at the highly skilled get a job in lithuania lithuania here is the link guys i've posted it there okay if you're watching this video after the live just click on replay live chat and you'll find all the links there so i know this website the only thing is that it focuses mostly on um jobs at international companies and startups but you might be lucky to find something guys just check and the beauty with most of the jobs on that platform work in lithuania they actually offer you relocation allowance of almost 3500 euros um, um so samuel also is saying Lithuania is not having embassy in Kenya, you can apply via Netherlands embassy. So what I don't know is, um, like you apply for, in fact, let me just check, Netherlands embassy, Kenya. Hmm. So... We have the Netherlands Embassy in Kenya. So what I don't know is whether it provides the visas for Lithuania or what, I don't know. Maybe um, 
Let me see. I don't know if Samuel can advise us, but Lithuania Embassy in Kenya. So what I see here, the closest diplomatic mission of the mission of Lithuania is Egypt. But I see here there's a consulate. I don't know. Anyway, uh, maybe Samuel can advise us. Um, so when he says you can apply via Netherlands Embassy, I don't know if you can apply for the Lithuanian visa or he means that you can apply for a Schengen visa and then visit Lithuania. I don't know. Samuel, can you please advise us? Uh, Regina is saying good to know. Uh, Steve is saying thank you for coming back. <laughs> yeah, Steve, I saw your message. You are very sad on the on the last video. <laughs> what about Ghana? Do they have an embassy? I don't know. Bravo, where is the country? I'm interested. I need your phone. So Lithuania is a European country. It's in the EU. But it is in Europe. It is one of the Schengen countries. And it borders um, Latvia and which other country? Let me see. southernmost and it is the largest of the Baltic states yeah so it actually borders Russia Belarus Latvia Estonia Denmark and Poland oh yeah actually Someone is already answering the question. Yeah, it's in the Baltic region. They share border with Estonia, Poland, and Latvia. Oh, less than two hours flight to Berlin. Somebody is asking, you said you are in Lithuania. So do we seek a visa from Ghana? It is a Schengen state, meaning if you are in any Schengen country. Oh, yeah. Oh, so someone, that's what you meant. Okay, yeah. You can vi apply for your Schengen visa from any other country. So, Samuel, I don't know if you're there working or you can DM. We can maybe do a video with you. Um, Chioni, so you're saying, Eva, somehow you remind me of the lady who intends to travel all the countries in the world and wrote a book. <laughs> really, which one? Though I also want to visit all countries in the world on my Kenyan mm -hmm. passport. And currently, I am, I think, on country number 100 and something. I think 102, 103. Thanks to COVID, <laughs> um, my plans were shattered, but I used to do like 15 countries every year. But when COVID happened, and now post COVID, travel has become so expensive, I can almost not afford to do that 15 in a year, but I really try. So I don't know which lady I remind you of, but yes, it's in my plan to travel to all countries in the world. Um, Edmond is asking, I am a photographer, is there an opportunity there? So Edmond, I've put a link there where you can check if your occupation is on the list um, of uh, shortage occupations. Yeah. Tumwine. Hi, how are you Tumwine? Yes, Tumwine, you sent me an email to write to a CV. I asked you to give me the details. You are yet to get back to me. And I sent you an email. So as soon as I have your details, I will do your CV. Please check your email. I already responded and asked you to send me your details. Joseph Kingara is watching from Kenya. Hi, Joseph. Hi, Wekesa. Hi, Rose. Joseph Kingara, thanks for the information. When one gets into Canada on a visitor visa, how can... Oh, my goodness. Joseph, we have like seven videos on the topic of converting your... Uh, visit visa to work visa, please go and watch. There are so many. Just go under the lives. You will find there, are, I think, six videos under the live live um, post. And also, Kingara, I am on a live. I'm not going to start looking for those videos. Please. I have done seven videos. Please just go and check. 
Um, and also there's, I've done seven lives and there's like just a video, um, they're called what? Pull, push videos that ones just under the videos column and under the playlist and all my videos, the title is exactly, they're not clickbait. What I write in the title is what I talk about. So as you can see on this particular video, what I've written is what I'm talking about. So if you just search, even just say Eva Mtali, just go to YouTube and say Eva Mtali, visit visa, Canada visit visa to work visa. You'll get all the videos. Please just go and watch. So guys, I think I have um, checked all your videos. I mean, all your comments. Hi, Godfrey from... Um, um, from where is this? Oh, Doha, nice to meet you. Um, yes, Samuel, I do CVs, but I charge I charge ten dollars for every CV and five dollars for the cover letter. So yeah, you can DM me on. Uh, let me put my CV address here. <laughs> I have a a CV due to public demand. Let me put the email address here. So it's ten dollars you can pay by M Pesa or by by PayPal. It's ten dollars. So this is the hmm, CV writing services. This is the email address you sent to me. That one. Even Tali CV services at gmail.com. And on the subject, just write CV. Yeah. And let me know and i'll give you all the details so guys um thank you so much for coming on this live i hope it is now clear on how you can uh, work in luthania and samuel please if you don't mind kindly dm me we need to um find out more about um luthania if you don't mind a lot of people are interested in learning more about it and to be such a great pleasure to have you um talk to us directly and guys um just for the record the recruitment event, uh, virtual recruitment event for Canada is still open. Guys, please apply. There's also another one happening in Paris. And there's um, actually one in, not just Paris, in France. There's almost three recruitment events. And tomorrow, which is Friday, 7 p.m. Nairobi time, I'm going to be hosting a fellow YouTuber who went to Canada through a work visa and she got her job through a recruitment event. She's going to be right here on the channel. We are going to do a live with her. And you guys are all welcome to come and ask all questions you have about recruitment events for Canada. And um, just to listen to her journey of how she immigrated to Canada, how she got her job through a recruitment event, and everything else you might want to know about moving to Canada on a work visa. She'll be right here on the channel tomorrow. That is Friday, um, 2nd of June, 2023, 7 p.m., Nairobi Tam will be live here on the channel and you're all welcome. Please invite your friends, please invite your family and those who are still looking to work on cruise ship jobs, um, Carnival, sorry, Royal, no wait, Carnival Cruises, they're going to be in Nairobi and on 5th and 6th of June 2023. They will be in Harare, Zimbabwe on the 8th and 9th 2023 and they'll be hiring people so i have shared all the details on my TikTok, ivam tali travel with ivam tali and i've also shared the information right here on the youtube channel please um if you are interested especially if you are um experienced in any of the culinary positions then you want to take advantage of these opportunities emirates airlines is also hiring customer service staff guys please apply and there are so many, so many opportunities I have shared on my TikTok. If you're not yet following me on my TikTok, you are missing out big time, big time, big time. So guys, 29 of you are watching me, only 16 likes. Miss how are two. I will end the line live here. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Bye, guys. And thank you so much, Chioni, so for your super chats. I appreciate you so much. Always supporting me. I do not take it for granted. May God bless you so much. Thanks, guys. And Sami, please, if you don't mind, you can DM me and we can chat more about um, your relocation or your life in Lithuania. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.